Hello friends, continuing in our series on the cholinergic system, today we will be talking about the muscarinic uh, cholinergic receptor antagonists, which means the things that block these receptors, uh, briefly. And then we will be talking about what little is known about the muscarinic cholinergic receptor genes. So first of all, it's quite interesting to note that in general, antidepressants appear to antagonize the nicotinic cholinergic receptors, which we haven't discussed yet. And remember, an whenever you hear antagonize, think of blocking. So they, they antagonize those receptors in the case of uh, antidepressants, whereas in the case of antipsychotics, several of them appear to antagonize the muscarinic cholinergic receptors. So for example, uh, haloperidol, brand name Haldol, uh, antagonizes the muscarinic cholinergic receptors. And a very famous compound called chlorpomazine, uh, brand name Thorazine, also um, antagonizes the muscarinic cholinergic receptors. Now these two compounds, Haldol and uh, Thorazine, are very commonly prescribed across mental asylums and from psychiatrists for schizophrenics and people with bipolar disorder. Unfortunately, Thorazine is found to be toxic uh, to neurons and causes brain damage over time. But uh, nonetheless, it's quite interesting that they have an effect on the muscarinic cholinergic receptors and it is tempting to speculate whether that effect may be uh, part of the reason why they uh, have, a, have a beneficial effect on schizophrenics, as you'll see from the gene discussion to follow. Oh, by the way, keep in mind that there's a blog post linked uh, down below uh, where you'll find a more detailed discussion on this topic or a more formal one with extensive citations. Um, so I will not be providing citations in the discussion on video. Um, now, in terms of the genes, as I described in the first video on the muscarinic cholinergic receptors, there are five muscarinic cholinergic receptors, M1 through M5, and there are five genes that respectively correspond to them, that is CHRM1 to CHRM5. Now, these genes are much less studied than the nicotinic uh, cholinergic receptor genes, and I think that the main reason why is because there has been ex extensive interest in studying um, nicotine dependence, which uh, could be also uh, you know, inspired by people trying to develop ph uh, pharmaceutical tools to uh, inhibit or decrease nicotine addiction. So, because there's money to be had with that. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, CHRM1 has been tied to nicotine dependence, which is interesting, I'll get back to that in a second. CHRM2 has been, is one of the most interestingly studied ones, it's been tied to alcohol dependence, and it's been tied to depression, and it's been tied to intelligence. In fact, there is one polymorphism at CHRM2, one genetic polymorphism that on its own uh, is tied to about a five point increase in IQ. Now, uh, almost five. Now, keep in mind, that's like 5% greater average intelligence in the US, just from one individual polymorphism at one gene. So it's, it's quite interesting and it needs to be more studied. Uh, CHRM3 has been tied to lung and cardiovascular disease as well as schizophrenia. Now this is quite interesting. Here, here enters schizophrenia into the uh, genome-wide association studies. CHRM4 was also tied to schizophrenia. So we can imagine that antagonizing these receptors that correspond to these genes may have an effect on schizophrenia in some way. Uh, CHRM5 was tied to the severity of smoking like CHRM1 was tied to nicotine dependence. And this is very interesting to me because by definition, nicotine is the chemical that does not agonize the muscarinic receptors. I mean, they wouldn't be muscarinic receptors if nicotine did agonize them. They would be something, they would be part of the nicotinic receptors. So it's quite interesting that these receptors have been tied to severity of smoking, which likely indicates their interrelation with the dopamine system. Because smoke, smoking is a very uh, dopaminergic uh, behavior. It uh, affects the dopamine system, which is one of the reasons drugs like Wellbutrin have been used to encourage people to stop smoking. So, you know, I, I don't want to speculate too much, but there's much more to be known about these receptors. As we know from the previous video, we don't really want to be agonizing all of them. Um, the ones of interest are CHRM1 and CHRM4, which are not the ones related to intelligence for some reason, but 
Um, nonetheless, um, very interesting, and I wish there could be more funding for research uh, that's, that specifically uh, deals with these uh, five receptors. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, which will cover, which will begin to cover the nicotinic cholinergic receptors, which are by far the more interesting branch of the cholinergic receptors and uh, a personal subject that I'm very interested in. Uh, we'll see you next time and be sure to check out the blog post below. Have a great day.